Good morning everyone. Today we will talk about the portrait of a lady. Not some scandalous portrait. There is no gossip surrounding it. It is a simple portrait of one really, really old woman. So what is so special about it, you ask? Well, the artist has sketched the portrait with lots of love and memory. It is a portrait that spans a whole lifetime. So let's take our own sweet time and set out on this journey down the memory lane where the artist Kushwan Singh himself will guide us. But before we commence this journey of ours, let's just make one more stop and learn about the artist. The writer. It may not seem so important from the exam perspective, but it may help us understand his perspective and the text better. So, Kushwan Singh was born in 1915 in Hadali, Pakistan, and he died on 20th March 2014 at the ripe old age of 99 in New Delhi, India. His notable works include Train to Pakistan, I Shall Never Hear a Nightingale, The Portrait of a Lady, Collected Works, His Stories Collection, which is perhaps a tribute from his side to his beloved grandmother. Why I Supported the Emergency, and Delhi, a novel. All these novels, including his magnum opus that is Train to Pakistan, portrays life in a gentle, humanistic way. He is a compassionate observer and sometimes a participant, as in Delhi, a novel. He takes us to the deepest recesses of human psyche to remind us of the things buried in the past just as he reminds us of the cozy warmth of a grandmother, of family and blood in here. He reminds us of the loss and the nostalgia that makes the human experience a really, really unique one. His literary style is full of sarcasm, humor and humanism. His sarcasm is sometimes biting and sometimes it is gentle, and his humor runs deep through all his writing which is steeped in humanism. This person wrote his own epitaph before he died, and this can be found in Hadali, Pakistan. For it says, Here lies one who spared neither man nor God. Waste not your tears on him, he was a sod. Writing nasty things he regarded as great fun, thank the Lord, he is dead, this son of a gun. You see the detached style of his writing. You see the humor, the sarcasm in it. It is not hurting anyone. But at the same time, it is steeped in humanism when we think that this is about his own self. He is writing something that would be there, that will stay behind once he leaves this earth. Now let's talk about the themes of this particular text. For themes, we have family bonding. We have Dislocation, dislocating one person from his or her roots and positing somewhere else. We have the clash of ideas between the East and the West. And finally, the text offers Kushwan Singh's tribute to his grandmother. Now, let's have a pictographic representation of this text, this portrait of a lady. Remember that this lady is only here for the purpose of representation. She is not actually the grandmother of Kushwan Singh. Take this as a disclaimer. Anyway, moving forward, we will come to conflict. But before we discuss the conflict in this text, let's stop for a moment again and think, why should we read this text? Why should we bother about it? You see, from one generation to the next, as we keep moving ahead, the definitions remain the same, but the person encapsulated in that definition, their appearance keep changing. A grandmother of today is not the same as a grandmother some 70 or 80 years back. I am talking about a woman who becomes a grandmother in, uh, say, 2020. They are not the same. The sweep of Western culture and modern values have transformed us. And the woman who becomes a grandmother today may not count the beads in her rosary but watch daily serials and converse well in English, at least in the urban side. 
So where and how does the portrait so painstakingly sketched by Kushwan Singh connect to us? The appearance, you see, the appearance of the person has changed today. But the love, the caring, they have remained unchanged. The clash between the ideologies of generations remain unchanged. And here I am talking about the generation gap. The loneliness of old age cannot be swept aside by TV and such. And people are even lonelier today. In Kushwan Singh's time, at least the parents brought the grandmother with them. But in today's time, the children, they go away. They start their own family. They live in small flat apartments. They get disconnected. So the loneliness is heavier. Also, the image of that old lady in white, slightly bent, tottering away in the house, lips moving in eternal prayer is something that we Indians, born and brought up and even today fed with Ramayana and Mahabharata, can still connect to. Now let us talk about the conflict. You see, in literature, conflict signifies a struggle between two opposing forces. Conflict is that element which makes a story really interesting. Think of the great internal conflict between Anakin Skywalker, the Jedi prophesied to bring balance to the Force, and Darth Vader, the dark side of Anakin, as he gets lured and becomes the most infamous Sith Lord. This conflict is what makes the original Star Wars such a great franchise. The conflict in the portrait is also internal in nature. It is between the conflicting values of East and West and the love between family members. The conflict is also between urban and rural lifestyle. These conflicts make the grandmother recede within herself, in her own world. But in her death, she established the victory of love over all conflicts. Now let us talk about the characters in this story. Obviously there is a narrator and his parents. We have some dogs in the village and some sparrows in the city. And finally there is the portrait of the grandmother, the grandmother herself. Now let us talk about the summary of this text because you see the actual text in our syllabus is really huge and since we have books with all of us, it is pointless to go this text line by line. What we will do, we will analyze the text, we will learn the summary, we will learn the word meaning and then we will try to explain what each section means. So here we are taking the summary of the first part, the childhood village. The narrator was left with his grandmother in the village. His parents were trying to establish a proper home for them in the city. The narrator was brought up by his grandmother's love and care. She used to wake him, bathe him, feed him, prepare him for school. She was a devoted woman. She would sit in the temple attached to the village school reading scriptures while the narrator learned his lessons. After school, they would return together. There existed a beautiful bond of love and friendship between the two. So the first part prepares us for this bond of love, the connecting thread between these two beings, the grandmother and her grandson. Now let's talk about the word meanings. First of all, monotonous. Monotonous means unvarying, tediously same, boring. Sing song means verse with marked and regular rhythm and rhyme. Bothered means worried, tried or cared in the text. For example, the narrator didn't try or he didn't even care to learn the prayers recited by his grandmother. Stale means food which are kept overnight, sometimes unpalatable from age, like stale bread. Chorus is an organized group who sings or recites together. Scriptures are a body of writings considered sacred or authoritative. Now let us talk about the bond of love, the connecting thread. When people grow old, they start to get lonely. Their own children grow up and go out into the world, leaving old parents behind. 
their grandchildren can make them feel alive again as they spend a lot of time together playing, sharing stories, stealing pickles from grandmother's store and secretly supplying her with sweet chocolates. The narrator was brought up by his grandmother. She showered all her love on him. They were inseparable. She was a devoted woman and would chant her prayers in a sing-song manner in the hope that Kushmand will learn them from her. Their rural atmosphere was also conducive to this blissful friendship. Conducive means supportive. She could help him with his lessons and prayers as they perfectly suited her own inclination. Her love can also be seen for the animals as she would feed the stray dogs stale chapatis on their way back home. The portrait that sings sketches through these episodes is one of love and idyllic bliss. It is one of lull before the storm. Let's move on to the part where we have the beginning of the end. The parents had found a comfortable place for the family. They brought the duo from the village so that they all can stay together. The narrator resumed his education in an English medium school. The grandmother couldn't take him to the school anymore as there was a school bus. The Western education was out of her grasp, so she couldn't even talk to him about the things taught in class. The Western education was also an attack on her belief system. Gradually, she receded into a small shell of her own world. Now let us again talk about the word meaning. Turning point, a point at which a significant change occurs. Rolled by means to pass. Like if an amount of time rolls by, it means time passes. Lewd means socially unacceptable, often with immoral sexual connotations, suggestions. Monopoly is the complete control or possession with no share to others. Harlots is an old-fashioned way to suggest disapproving some woman. It means actually a female prostitute. Disapproval means the feeling of having a negative opinion of something or someone. There be gods on earth. So this is where the ideas, the ideology of the grandmother that is of the East came to clash with the West. You see, while East admits God, West removes God with science. So once they settled in the city, the parents brought the whole family together there. However, the grandmother, after spending a lifetime in the village, found it difficult to cope with the city life. It was not just a question of a relocation. Her entire belief system came to a clash with the Western ideology when her grandson joined an English medium school. The education imparted there distressed her a lot as they left no space for her scriptures and gods and the divine. Moreover, she couldn't accept all the things taught in school. Subjects like music, according to her, was not meant for the refined people of respectable household. Her protest took the form of dignified silence as she gradually retreated from the family affairs. And this brings us to the next part. You see, while there was this rift that had already began, we also have the narrator gradually evolving from caterpillar to butterfly. The rift increased further when the narrator got his own room. Till he started university, he lived with his grandmother. The thread that held them together strained precariously under the strain of ever-increasing distance. That thread snapped when a physical distance came between the form of a separate room and the garb of privacy. The old lady again accepted her isolation silently. She rarely talked. Her whole days were spent on an end in front of the spinning wheel and with the sparrows who were her only companions. Now let's talk about the word meanings again. Snapped. Something that is already thin or weak to be broken suddenly and quickly accepted her seclusion with resignation. With the narrator getting his own room, the old lady was actually 
physically secluded in her own corner. However, she didn't protest. She had resigned herself and made no demands of her own. She accepted her loneliness with silence. A veritable bedlam of chirrupings. Bedlam is a noisy situation with no order. The noise made by the sparrows made it sound like a madhouse without any order. The word bedlam perhaps comes from the civic lunatic hospital, hospital of St. Mary of Bethlehem in London. As the hospital became a madhouse, the noise, the chaos there gradually made it synonymous, the word bedlam synonymous with madhouse. Perched means to sit on or near the edge of something. Shoed means an expression directed to animals and even children, babies, to make them go away. Every man is an island. Every woman too. Just as the grandmother was becoming an island. For a growing person, their own space is really important. That the narrator would get his own room at some point of time is nothing unnatural. However, in this case, it meant the actual snapping of the thread that had him tied to his grandmother. She had almost stopped talking. Her days spent in front of a spinning wheel, white hair, white sari, wrapped in silence. The very image of the fate sisters spinning threads on a spindle, measuring the thread on her own long life, and perhaps waiting for the moment when it's time to cut the thread. You, if you remember the fate sisters, Clotho, she would uh, spin threads on a spindle. The cases, she would measure the thread. And finally, there was Atropos who would cut the thread. So it is as if the grandmother represented Clotho, Lachesis and Atropos all in one. The sparrows never left her. Away from the urbane social world, she found her refuse in nature. The half an hour she spent with the sparrows were the best half an hour in her day. Even the sparrows, however, flew away. Just as her own sparrow, the narrator, was about to fly away for a long, long time. There is none to call our own, actually completely unconditional. Now let's talk about the final separation to fly on without nest. The narrator decided to go abroad for further studies. His grandmother was really old by then. He never imagined to see her alive when he would return after five long years. He was pleasantly surprised and overwhelmed to see her standing there to welcome him home, as if she didn't age a single day. The day went as per the routine, with spinning and with the sparrows. But the change came at night. She didn't pray, she sang with the neighborhood women. It was the first time in ages she didn't follow her routine. Let's talk about the word meanings first. And we have one could never tell. Nobody can say anything for certain. The narrator mentions that uh, the grandmother was really advanced in her age and suggests that it might be their last meeting as nobody can tell for certain whether she would, at her age, leave for five long years more. Sentimental means emotional. Frivolous means behaving in a silly way and not taking anything seriously. Rebukes means to speak angrily to someone to scold. Frivolous rebukes therefore means mock anger, scolding but not really meaning it. She was indulging the sparrows in fact. Finally, we come to Atropos, the one whose duty was to cut the threads, remember? So Atropos, is it time yet? It was perhaps the love for the narrator that had kept the old woman alive, hanging onto her thread, metaphorically speaking. She welcomed him in silence as ever, her lips muttering in prayer as ever. Even her day went with a spinning wheel and her sparrows 
just as per her routine. But in the evening, there was a break. Instead of praying, she thrummed on an old drum and sang the homecoming song of warriors along with the neighborhood ladies. Was it to welcome her grandson home after five long years in abroad? Was it to prepare her soul for the long homebound journey ahead? One thing is sure that there was a break in her routine. A break that perhaps symbolically represented Atropos's cutting the thread of life on her spinning wheel. Now let's finalize the homecoming song. The song and excitement had overstrained the old lady. She fell with a mild fever next morning. Despite what the doctor said, she made it up in her mind that it's time for her to leave the earth and her earthly shell. To make up for the lost time, she closed herself up for her final prayers and thus prepared her soul for the final homebound journey. She died peacefully. Even the sparrows came to pay their tribute. They didn't touch the breadcrumbs given, but left at once when they carried her body out of the room. Let's talk about the word meanings first. The sagging skins of the dilapidated drum. Sagging means to lose firmness, grow weak or soft. Dilapidated means ruined or decayed. The expression suggests a really old drum that has lost the firmness of its surface skin because of age. Persuade means to plead with, entreat. Overstraining means to strain somebody or something beyond a maximum tolerable limit. Strain means to exert to the utmost, injure or harm by excessive pressure. Pallor means deficiency of color, especially of the face, that is paleness. Shroud means burial garment, something to cover the body with. Stretcher is a makeshift device to carry an injured, a sick or a dead person. Cremated means to reduce to ashes by burning. Blaze means something really brilliant, resplendent like a fire. And thus we come to the end of it all. The grandmother had lived her life on her own terms and she left it on her stool. When she couldn't understand the world around her anymore, she receded within herself. When it was time for her to leave, she closed the world outside. She is the queen matriarch of a family, living her life in dignified silence, austere in her needs, persistent in her prayers. One can almost think that she was living only with the hope of seeing her grandson one last time. That done, there was nothing to hold her back. Even nature came to mourn for her in the form of sparrows. The unconditional love that she had reserved for her grandson and in his absence showered on the poor creatures didn't go unheeded. And thus, a generation came to an end. So here we end the summary part of this text. We have slightly analyzed the summaries. We have learned about the story. What remains is uh, the thematic discussion. And for that, you need to stay hooked. Hope you understood the summary and liked it. Please let me know if there be any doubts, any questions or any suggestions. Thank you.